In 2018, modified ground mobility vehicles started appearing in combat zones across the Middle East. What crews inside could now do, buttoned up, fully protected, would have been impossible just a few years earlier. This is the GMV 1.1. And if you haven't heard of it, that's by design. SOCOM has been quietly perfecting something far more fundamental. A truck that fits inside a helicopter, drives like it's possessed, and now hits back harder than platforms twice its size. Here's what matters. The original GMV, the Humvee-based workhorse, defined special operations ground mobility for two decades. Fast, modular, air transportable. But Afghanistan and Iraq exposed brutal truths. Operators were sitting ducks. IEDs shredded thin armor. And when drones became the dominant threat, a turret gunner standing exposed became a liability SOCOM couldn't accept. So they evolved it. Modular bolt-on armor. Remote weapon stations with thermal targeting. Counter drone integration. Network-enabled sensors all without sacrificing the one thing that makes it lethal. You can still cram two of these inside an MH-47 and be guns up 60 seconds after touchdown. The question isn't whether the GMV 1.1 is impressive. It's whether this incremental capabilities first approach, upgrading rather than replacing, represents the smarter path forward in an era where every platform needs to counter swarms, jam signals, and network seamlessly. Because what SOCOM has built here isn't just a better truck, it's a blueprint for how you modernize without breaking the budget or the mission. Let's establish something up front. The M1288 GMV 1.1 wasn't supposed to be revolutionary. When General Dynamics and Flyer Defense won the contract in August 2013, beating out AM General and Navistar in a competition so contentious it ended up in federal court, the goal was straightforward replace 1,092 aging Humvee-based GMVS with something lighter, faster, and actually designed from scratch for special operations. The Flyer 72 platform delivered. At 72 inches wide, it slipped perfectly into a CH-47 or MH-47G, two at a time if configured right, with a 2.0-liter bi-turbo diesel generating up to 220 horsepower in later variants and a six-speed automatic it could hit 95 miles per hour across terrain that would tear a Humvee apart. Payload capacity ranged from 4,500 to 5,700 pounds, depending on configuration. Seating for up to nine, gun up in under a minute. SOCOM fielded the first units in November 2015. By 2018, operators were running them downrange in Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. The mobility was exceptional. The off-road performance was leagues beyond the old GMV. But then feedback started filtering back through channels, and it pointed to gaps SOCOM hadn't fully anticipated. First mystery, protection. The base GMV 1.1 was unarmored, lightweight and agile, yes, but Afghanistan wasn't turning into a purely hit-and-run environment. Operators were embedding with partner forces, holding checkpoints, running convoy escort, scenarios where you couldn't just speed away from contact. They needed modular armor that didn't turn the platform into a JLTV weight compromise. Second mystery, lethality while protected. A ring-mounted crew-served weapon is devastating when your gunner is willing to stand exposed in a turret. In a drone-saturated battle space, that's not sustainable. Operators needed the ability to engage targets from inside the vehicle, day and night, with precision fire control. That meant remote weapon stations, but RWS systems are heavy, power-hungry, and expensive. Could you retrofit the entire fleet without blowing up the program cost? Third mystery, modularity under pressure. Every theater has different requirements. Reconnaissance in one area of operations, direct action in another, CASAVAC in a third. The GMV 1.1 was always meant to be reconfigurable, but could it evolve fast enough to integrate counter UAS, electronic warfare, and network targeting without becoming a Frankenstein's monster of duct tape solutions? SOCOM's answer to all three wasn't a GMV 2.0. It was something more interesting. Keep watching. To understand why SOCOM chose incremental evolution over clean sheet replacement, you need context on what the original GMV actually was and why replacing it entirely would have been strategic malpractice. The ground mobility vehicle program launched in the 1990s as a Humvee modification. Take an M1025 or M1113, strip unnecessary weight, beef up the suspension, add a central tire inflation system, and mount crew serve weapons on ring mounts. It worked. 
GMVs deployed to Bosnia, Afghanistan, Iraq, and across Africa. They were fast, maintainable, and critically internally transportable by MH-47 Chinooks and MH-53 Pave Lows. That air mobility envelope was sacred, but Humvees weren't designed for what SOCOM was asking them to do. The chassis flexed under payload stress. The engines, 6.5-liter turbocharged diesels, were underpowered for the weight operators actually carried. And as IED threats escalated, add-on armor turned them into slow, fuel-guzzling targets. By 2012, SOCOM had a decision, accept degraded capability or start over. The GMV 1.1 solicitation demanded internal transport by V-22, MH-47, CH-53, and C-130. It required better off-road mobility than the Humvee. And crucially, it specified next-generation communications and computing architecture, laying groundwork for future upgrades. The potential contract value, $562 million for up to 1,300 vehicles. General Dynamics didn't win on paper specs alone. The Flyer 72 had a critical advantage. It was already certified. Testing was done. Logistics were established. When you're so calm and you need platforms in theater fast, a non-developmental vehicle beats a clean sheet wonder truck every time. First deliveries hit units in November 2015. Full rate production began shortly after. By 2020, over 1,000 GMV 1.1s were in service. The Army even bought a variant, the M1297A GMV, for light infantry brigades, ensuring parts commonality and reducing long-term sustainment costs. Here's the pivot. SOCOM could have declared victory, locked the design, and moved on. Instead, they did something smarter. They treated the GMV 1.1 as a constantly evolving platform. Modular by design meant capability insertion didn't require new contracts or production line retooling. It meant listening to downrange feedback and iterating fast. That philosophy, treating vehicles as software-like systems with rolling upgrades, is what transformed the GMV 1.1 from a Humvee replacement into a testbed for how you actually modernize in the 21st century. Layer 1. Armor that doesn't compromise the mission. 10 Kate. Advanced Armor developed modular bolt-on protection kits specifically for the GMV 1.1. An armor contract worth $30 million was awarded in April 2014, with deliveries beginning between 2017 and 2018. The system is elegant in its simplicity. Ballistic plates attached to the cab, doors, and floor without permanent modification. Gunner protection kits. Armored tubs that fit over the turret ring shield operators during sustained engagements. According to open sources, the 10 k armor kit provides VPM level B6 protection, defeating 7.62 by 51 mm NATO rounds at 30 meters. Here's the critical part. The armor is mission configurable. Operators can field a lightweight recon variant or load full protection and still maintain air transportability. Two armored GMV 1.1 still fit inside an MH-47G. You're protected, but you're not stuck driving because you're too heavy to fly. Layer 2, fighting buttoned up. The M153 Crows 2, Kongsberg's protector remote weapon station, changed everything. Mount it on the GMV 1.1's turret ring, and suddenly your crew can engage targets from inside the vehicle using a joystick and screen. The system handles M250 caliber machine guns, Mark 1940mm grenade launchers, M240 machine guns, and, this is key, Javelin anti-tank missiles via the Crows J mount. The sensor suite is what makes it lethal. Daylight video camera with optical zoom. Second generation thermal imaging for night ops. Laser rangefinder accurate to 1,500 meters. Fully integrated fire control with ballistic correction. The mount absorbs approximately 85% of recoil, delivering an estimated 95% accuracy rate even while moving. Operators can track targets moving 25 miles per hour without losing lock. If a threat ducks behind cover, the system maintains target memory. And because the entire assembly is remotely controlled, your gunner isn't exposed to counterfire, sniper rounds, or, critically, small drone drops that have become endemic in Ukraine and the Middle East. But here's what the story actually shows. Crows 2 fielding occurred in phases across the fleet. Priority units receive systems first, with installation requiring electrical integration and crew training. Rather than forcing a universal refit and breaking budgets, SOCOM phased it intelligently based on unit deployment schedules and mission requirements. Layer 3. The Heavy Duty Evolution At AUSA 2024, Flyer Defense unveiled the Flyer 72 HD reinforced frame. 
Payload capacity of 5,700 pounds baseline. Reinforced suspension. Industry demonstration showed it could handle weapon systems up to 30 millimeter autocannons. Here's the nuance everyone misses. The 72HD represents an industry-led evolution of the baseline GMV 1.1 platform. It's not a new SOCOM program of record requiring separate acquisition processes. Flyer Defense is offering operators enhanced capability options that align with ongoing sustainment. Think of it as a running production change. Vehicles coming off the line incorporate upgraded components. Older units stay in service. And if you need the extra payload for a specific mission, you pull from the newer pool. This is sustainment strategy disguised as innovation. SOCOM has been burned before by programs that promise the moon and deliver budget overruns. The GMV 1.1 approach, incremental, backward compatible, mission focused, keeps costs predictable while letting capability creep forward. Layer 4, network integration and future capabilities. SOCOM isn't just bolting armor and weapons onto these platforms. They're treating them as nodes in a networked kill chain. Upgraded communication suites provide real-time data link with overhead ISR. Counter UAS integration is already being tested. At AUSA 2025, the Flyer 72 HD was demonstrated with Raphael's drone dome system, pairing hemispheric radar, EOIR sensors, and soft kill jammers with the mobility operators need. Future capabilities under exploration include edge compute modules that process RWS feeds locally, flagging threats before human gunners spot them, route planning algorithms that overlay EW threat maps and suggest approach vectors, predictive maintenance sensors that radio back to logistics before critical failures happen. The platform isn't standing still. It's becoming smarter every fiscal year. And because the architecture was designed with open standards and modular payload bays, these upgrades don't require ripping apart the vehicle. Plug, play, train, deploy. So what does all this actually mean for how SOCOM fights? First, force multiplication through survivability. In drone-saturated environments, think Ukraine, Gaza, or a future Taiwan Strait contingency, every platform needs layered defense. The armored, RWS-equipped GMV 1.1 lets four-man teams operate in contested areas without accepting catastrophic casualties the moment contact is made. That keeps raids viable, it keeps partner force advising safe, and it preserves expensive, highly trained operators who represent years of investment. Second, the economics of modernization. SOCOM's budget has been effectively flat since 2019, a 14% reduction in buying power when adjusted for inflation, equating to roughly $1 billion in lost purchasing capacity. That's forced hard choices. The GMV 1.1 approach, sustained incremental upgrades rather than new start programs, stretches dollars further. You're not designing from scratch. You're not rebuilding supply chains. You're buying kits, integrating proven systems, and leveraging economies of scale across Army and Allied variants. Congressional funding routinely supports GMV 1.1 sustainment, armor kits, spares, and integration work precisely because the program has a track record. It delivers capability on time, on budget, without drama. That reliability makes it a safe investment for lawmakers under pressure to show results. Third, tactical adaptation at speed. Ukraine proved that the character of warfare changes faster than acquisition timelines. FPV drones, loitering munitions, EW jamming. These weren't doctrinal threats five years ago. They're existential now. The GMV 1.1's modularity means SOCOM can field counter UAS kits, updated comms, and network targeting faster than a traditional program could even complete preliminary design review. That agility is strategic advantage. While peer competitors field rigid single-purpose platforms, U.S. special operators roll with vehicles that morph mission to mission. Recon today, direct action tomorrow. Cast evac under fire the day after. Same truck. Fourth, it's a model for the rest of DOD. If you can keep a vehicle relevant for 10 plus years through rolling upgrades without spiraling costs or capability gaps, you've solved the valley of death problem that kills so many defense programs. The GMV 1.1 proves you can do incremental right. And as budget pressures intensify across the services, that lesson is going to matter more than any flashy new platform announcement. America's special operators bet on evolution, and they're winning. Where does the GMV 1.1 go from here? Counter UAS is the near-term focus. Integration testing is underway with Raphael's Drone Dome and systems based on Andril's Lattice architecture. SOCOM awarded Andril a contract worth nearly $1 billion in 2022 
to serve as systems integration partner for Counter UAS. These setups pair hemispheric radars with EOIR tracking and RF jammers. Soft kill first, hard kill options if soft measures fail. Mount that on a mobile GMV 1.1 chassis and you've got expeditionary air defense that moves with maneuver units. No waiting for m shored strikers to lumber forward. Your recon screen is also your drone shield. Autonomy represents the medium-term development area. SOCOM is exploring autonomous convoy following capabilities, where unmanned GMV 1.1s could trail manned vehicles carrying supplies or casualties. The enabling technology is already being tested on other soft platforms. Scaling it to GMV requires sensor integration and ruggedization. Imagine a raid element dropping into a landing zone with three manned GMV 1.1s and two autonomous logistics variants. You just tripled your payload without adding personnel. On the lethality side, directed energy is coming. The Army is procuring 20 kilowatt class lasers for counter UAS applications against Group 1 and 2 drone threats. The GMV 1.1's electrical architecture and payload margin could accommodate such systems as the technology matures and becomes more compact. The unresolved question is platform longevity. SOCOM fielded the first GMV 1.1s in November 2015. That's a decade of service already. The Flyer 72 HD offers a path forward with enhanced capability, but at some point, the underlying chassis will age out. Does SOCOM commit to another decade of incremental evolution, or do they start planning GMV 2.0 with hybrid electric propulsion and built-in autonomy from day one? Here's the answer the budget tells you. They'll ride the 1.1 as long as missions allow. Because replacing a fleet this large this soon isn't just expensive. It's strategically wasteful when incremental upgrades keep you ahead of the threat. The GMV 1.1 wasn't designed to be a headline. It was designed to work. And in an era where every dollar counts and every capability gap is exploited instantly, that quiet competence is the rarest asset of all. Hit subscribe for the follow-up on CUAS kits for light soft vehicles, we're breaking down soft kill versus hard kill trade-offs and why SOCOM is investing in both. Thanks for watching.